Live from San Jose, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's The Cube, covering QuickBooks Connect 2016. Now, here are your hosts, Jeff Frick and John Wall. Well, welcome back here on The Cube, the flagship broadcast outlet for Silicon Angle TV, where we extract the signal from the noise. Here in San Jose, live, along with Jeff Frick, my colleague here. I'm John Walls, and we are at QuickBooks Connect 2016. You need a cup of coffee. Not just any cup of coffee, you need a serious cup of coffee. And that's what Death Wish Coffee is all about. We've got Mike Brown with us, who's the owner of Death Wish Coffee. Mike, uh, glad to have you with us here. And Thanks. Andrew Berg, who's the managing partner of uh, uh, Berg Partners, mm -hmm. an accounting firm, and why the two of you are together, we'll get to in just a moment. First though, let's tell the Death Wish Coffee story. Yeah. You were the winner of the, uh, the Small Business Big Game competition here last year that uh, QuickBooks put on, and because you were the winner of that, you received a Super Bowl commercial Right. for Death Wish Coffee, all right? So pick it up from there. Uh, <laughs> you went through this long criteria, you checked all the boxes, they announced that Death Wish Coffee is the winner of a Super Bowl ad. How'd you feel? Oh, um, I cried. I, I was, it was a dream come true. It was something that you know, I couldn't even imagine happening. Um, and then it just all hit me all at once. And it was something that my team and I, we worked really hard for um, during the whole competition. Actually, last year, at this. One year ago, I think today, they announced the top three businesses on stage here at QuickBooks Connect. And just, just making the top three was such an honor. Because um, you know, America came and they voted for who they wanted to represent small business you know, in the Super Bowl. And so so how, big a, how big an operation were you at the time? And, and, and where are you? Right, so at that time, we had 11 employees. And since then, in, in just a year, we've hired uh, six more, and we're looking to hire another three more before the end of the year. So. Uh, so from the just personnel standpoint, we've pretty much doubled in size. And how much coffee were you selling you know, before? Um, a lot. <laughs> I mean, I mean, right, a lot. But, so you did, I mean, but here you are, you're an 11 employee company right. in upstate New York, near Saratoga uh, yep. Springs. So in terms Getting of- a Super Bowl ad. <laughs> Come on, Mike. We're 11 it people. It doesn't happen. It's a lot of orders coming in all of a sudden. It is a lot of orders. February 4th or whatever the day was afterwards. Yeah, I believe right. we had about um, almost a quarter million dollars in sales that day. Uh, that, I shouldn't even say that day, that evening, because the Super Bowl didn't go off until I think it's 10 o'clock. Yeah, right, right. East, East Coast time, so yeah. At what point of the game did your ad hit? The third quarter. Third mm -hmm. quarter? Mm -hmm. Right. All right. So all of a sudden now you're front page news and you're getting all these orders in. Mm -hmm. You guys freak out at all? Or how well prepared were you to handle the onslaught? Yeah, we were actually very well prepared. We found out that we won about a month before, about a month, I'm sorry, about two months before the, the actual Super Bowl. So we couldn't tell anyone. It was kind of all under, under wraps. We, we had to, if we had to tell, like when we talked to our suppliers, we had to have them sign NDAs. Um, so they, so they didn't like spill the beans to everyone? So to speak. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, you know, we, we mapped out the worst case scenario, best case scenario, probable scenarios for every part of my business that I thought would be affected. Um, and I set different people on my team to you know, take control of, of, of those tasks. So we had to plan A, plan B, plan C. Luckily it went off real smooth, smoother than we, we could ever expect it. So you won, and then this guy walks up to you on the stage. He says, hi, I'm Andrew Berg. <laughs> and, I'm an and you won. <laughs> right. So Andrew, you take it up from there. Yeah. What, what prompted you to go up to say hi to Mike and introduce yourself and start yeah. the conversation? Well, we didn't know we won a Super Bowl commercial. We were here for QuickBooks Connect. I was here to get some education and learn more about what's going on in the accounting and small business world. Um, we were watching the event where it was narrowed down to the top three and I was with my partner and um, we both looked and said, wow, that has got to be the brand that's got to win. It seems to be such a natural fit for a Super Bowl commercial to go big time. You know, people love coffee. And uh, so ju we are just always open and friendly type people. We just went up to them at the uh, concert that was being provided by QuickBooks, uh, by Intuit across the street and just said hi while I was having a beer. And um, I asked a couple key questions and I think it was clear that he was overwhelmed and. Uh, he kind of knew, wow, something big's about to happen, and it was clear to us pretty cl early on that he was being underserved. So he said, um, you know, why don't we get on a video call next week? Uh, he said, but by the way, you got to sign this NDA before you're on a video call. I'm like, sign this NDA for what? 
And then that's what he kind of told me after I signed it, of course, what was going on. And I kind of went back to my team and said, oh my God, this is go time for us too, because he needs to be ready to be able to manage his business for what's about to occur. And it was our job to take away a lot of responsibilities off his plate and kind of leave his brain fresh to take care of what he needed to do. This was going to be a huge change for his business. So um, it was pretty amazing. Uh, I never would have expected it to be um, as amazing a trip as it's been so far uh, for, for the last 12 months. So we talk about Super Bowl ads all the time, talking about cloud-based computing and Amazon and you know spin up a bunch of servers because you're going to run a Super Bowl ad, et cetera. Usually for oh, yeah. big companies like a Pepsi commercial or a promo or Coca-Cola. What were some of the things that you put in place in anticipation of this event, thinking proactively, and then what kind of turned out as expected, and then what turned out in a way that you had no idea? Mm -hmm. There must have been a couple things that just like, whoa, yeah, we so didn't see that one coming. So as far as the website goes, you know, we run on the Shopify network, so we called up Shopify, and we're like, listen guys, we can't have any hiccups Spin here. Up some servers. Yeah, get these servers going. <laughs> um, they actually put together a 12-person team on their end to watch our website as it, as it went off, and it went off without a hitch. It was actually really smooth. They told me they put me on the, the Kanye plan, and I'm like, what's the Kanye plan? And they're like, oh, Kanye released his last album on our on our uh, on our servers, and it, you know, it went off fine, millions of people. So I was like, all right, I felt a little better about that since I was on the the Kanye plan. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, so yeah, that went well. Um, we had to reach out to third party help for our, our production. Um, that went kind of smooth. It could have went better. I think the only hiccup we had one vendor who underperformed and couldn't and, and couldn't do what they said they were going to do. So I mean. So you preload a bunch of inventory. Did you, you know, obviously yeah, exactly. stock up significantly before? Okay. Stocked up. We had to hire some customer service reps. We do all of our customer service in house, um, so we had to get them ready. We actually brought in some new technology to to help with the customer service requests and do a lot, some auto replies, um, just stuff to, to handle the, the extra traffic. We rearranged our website and and made it very very easy for our customers to purchase. It was basically, they got to our website, they could just do a one-click one click buy. Right. Um, they didn't have to search around for the product. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we thought, you know, a lot of brainstorming, a lot of team meetings, and I think we, we handled it well. There was, there was no, there was no, there was no problems that were above and beyond what we could handle. And how much of, uh, was Intuit and, and QuickBooks involved in that process, you know, beyond just giving you <laughs> the commercial? I mean, they've been great. They've been so supportive throughout the entire process. I've actually been out to Intuit's headquarters a handful of times since, since the commercial went off. Um, they work with Andrew a lot. Andrew's actually on their council. Accountants Council. Accountants yeah. Council. So if I have any problems, I can go to Andrew and Andrew can go directly to them. Um, and, and put it in accounting terms for them, you know, so, mm -hmm. so they understand. So then what, what did you do? What was your yeah. kind of bunker up, get so ready? You never know what you're going to get involved with when you get a new client, so um, sometimes the client doesn't know exactly what they need and don't need, so asking the question is doesn't really get you the answer you're looking Especially for. So it's I said, a Super Bowl ad, right? Yeah, I said, send me your books, and I looked at it, and I was, it was clear he was completely underserved. I mean, Mike had no access to his own bookkeeping at all, it was being held on his bookkeeper's server and he wasn't allowed to look at it. And they would send reports and the reports didn't have any meaning. And I said to Mike, look, we need to make changes immediately. So in December, we immediately moved to QuickBooks Online so he had visibility of his bookkeeping, started to restructure it so that the records made sense. And then we uh, started to remove some administrative responsibilities that Mike was taking on so he can focus on other things. So we went to bill.com immediately had him go to hire a, a new person in his office who was going to handle the administration of paperwork, getting where it needed to, take that bill paying responsibility off of Mike, despite the fact that Mike still wanted to have control over authorization, so he does have that. Um, that was really very, very early on, probably within the first 30 to 60 days, we installed all of that, knowing we needed to be ready. Um, uh, Mike, also, you failed to mention that we talked that you were working with a third-party uh, facilitator too, who had yeah. to be brought up to speed. So the third-party facilitator had to be notified to provide more rack space. And by the way, there's all these orders going to be coming in. So um, there was a lot that went into it. And uh, you should probably mention um, real quickly what happened with the uh, week before when the commercial was first announced and you were on TV in the morning. We kind of got a preview of what was going to happen mm -hmm. because a week before the Super Bowl, the commercial actually went out. Yeah, the commercial aired on CBS This Morning um, with Gail King, I believe her name is. Yeah, and it, it, you know, it aired in the morning and, and it was just from that, 
you know, publicity in the morning, we saw a giant spike in sales. So that was kind of like a, I guess, a warm up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a warm -up Shot over the, the bow, if you right. will, yeah, in the commercial. Kind of curious, this really is not relevant to the, the discussion, but what kind of traffic do you get from the Super Bowl ad? Like, yeah. website traffic, so, what kind of numbers you get? Yeah, so I mean, I was watching it. I was in my palm of my hand on my cell phone. I'm watching the traffic go up. And within the first 10 minutes, we had, 100, we had over 150,000 people on our site at one time. And it stayed up. I data. assume that's a bit of an increase from what you usually have. Yeah, usually we'll have, I mean, on it, like a, on our email release day where we send out a newsletter, we can yeah. get up to 1,000 at one time, about 150,000, that's, 150, that's, that's, that's almost unheard and, of. And, you know, and Andrew, <laughs> some of the things you're talking about here, I mean, I know a Super Bowl ad was the motivation here, right? That's what drove it. But I, I get the feeling that just in general, and when it comes to accounting, some of this, this hygiene you're talking about should be standard practice, that you should have full transparency, you should have full access, mm -hmm. you should, have this and that and the other, and there are probably a lot of small businesses that don't know what they're missing or what they don't have because they don't know what they don't know. Absolutely, you know, I mean? you know um, one of the thing, reasons I've structured my practice the way it is is because I want to help small businesses focus their attention on what they do best. Why did they open that business? They opened the business to do whatever they love to do. They didn't open it so that they can learn bookkeeping. They didn't do it so they can start doing bill pay. They didn't do it because they want to deal with HR issues. So I looked at it and said, you know, I want to design a, a firm that takes those responsibilities easily away from the business owner so he can go ahead and grow his business. The fact that he had a Super Bowl commercial was going to be a catalyst to be able to kind of proof of concept for us, and we've been doing this for a lot of years, and it's really a passion of mine to say we really want super small businesses to succeed, and that's why I think I fit in really well with Intuit's concept and QuickBooks concept of what's going on here at this conference, because we are all on board with um, trying to alleviate the fears that all small business owners seem to have and help them focus their attention on why they went into business and help them be successful. So, uh, just a quick uh, tidbit story. So Mike was in San Francisco when the whole Super Bowl thing was going down with Intuit, and I actually was lucky enough to be in at the Super Bowl in Intuit's box watching at the same time. That's a pretty and nice perk, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it was unrelated, completely unrelated, oh, believe it or not. It was right, a completely okay. unrelated reason to be there. All right, but okay. I was there and I had my phone and I'm kind of looking at what Mike's looking, I'm texting, I'm like, oh my God, do you see what's going on? And everybody in the box is cheering and like, oh my God, oh my God. And it was just an unbelievable night. I just, as Mike said, the numbers were astronomical, and uh, it was hard to sleep that night. <laughs> now that night's gone, mm -hmm. we're still only a few miles from, from Levi Stadium, hopefully you went by and uh, <laughs> touched the wall again, that oh, was a great night. So where are you now, you know, kind of what, what was the bump that you got? Obviously you got a huge bump, but you know, you hope that the dip is a little higher than the, the right. new baseline. So how has it really kind of changed your business um, and as you look forward now, and, and also now with a, with a pro behind you, how are you transforming your business? What's next for Deathwish Coffee? Yeah, I mean, according to, I mean, with the books, it's totally transformed. Now I have, working with Andrew, I have a, a clear picture of where my business was uh, a year ago, and where it is now, and all the months in between. I have like a story, um, a pattern, I have a budget that I follow. So, so I'm trying to, my, bo my books are solid, which is great. You know, it feels good. I can, I can forecast, you know, what's going to happen in a couple months and make decisions based, based on all these numbers I have in front of me. Um, in terms of growth um, from the Super Bowl, um, the big challenge coming out of it was, yeah, the customer retention. We didn't want people to try our product once and be done with it. So, you know, we worked on some marketing techniques where we can, you know, Get get a uh, get more repeat customers. We have a subscription service we offer. Um, we ask people to join our mailing list, so we're able to capture a lot of those customers' information. And and with their permission, we you know we get, we remarket to them monthly. Um, that's been very powerful. Um, but after the peak, yeah, we peaked and we leveled off um, at a really a really decent number. Um, our revenue has gone has quadrupled this year. Um, Quadrupled. Quadrupled nice. in been one a year. year. It's been a good year. Uh, so if we can keep that going, uh, which I think we do, fourth quarter is usually our strongest quarter. We do about 40% of our revenue uh, this quarter. Um, so we're watching numbers closely. We have a lot of, uh, I have a new staff that I've brought on to help, to help me with the demand. We're moving into a new facility. We purchased new equipment so we can start pulling back from our third party uh, Pro producers that have been helping us out. So we heard from Andrew about about he thought you were being underserved and some things that he could change. Yeah. If you were uh, you know looking into the camera here and talking to a small business owner at home who's not here at the show, okay, and you give them some advice in terms of the relationship you want with your accountant, what they should be looking for, and maybe some things they're not seeing, what would that be? I'd say 
Want me to talk right to the camera here? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Go right ahead All right. if you want. Small business owners at home, if you're only talking to your accountant at tax time or when you have a problem, that's, that's a problem. You should be talking to your accountant uh, on regular time intervals. I talk with Andrew once a week. We have a video call. Um, if your accountant's not up with technology and what's, you know, what's going to make your uh, job easier, um, maybe you should have a talk with them about that and you know, what tools are out there that they can use. Um, and you know, get those budgets together. I'm going to forecast with you. You can probably chime in too, Andrew. Yeah, yeah you know, I'll tell you what. Um, it's not just about what I do, it's about the owner being willing to listen as well. Mike has been so great at saying, kind of tell me what we can do to be more efficient. And I say, I have this great idea. And he's like, all right, let's test it and see what, how it works out. And we've been able to install new technologies. One of the things that I had mentioned to Mike way early on when I first went up there, so we drove, I'm, in, I'm outside Philadelphia, so, and they're outside of Albany, New York, so that's a five hour, six hour drive. We drove up there, and the first day I met up there with him, I kind of drew out a flow chart on a loose leaf piece of paper and said, this is what I think's going on in your business. Let's sit down and talk and tell me whether I'm right or wrong. Here's where our goods come in, raw materials, here's how it's manufactured, here's how you get paid. And we literally tried to use that to install a system, not only for him to use from a production perspective, but I can use to kind of develop the books. And um, one of the things early on we talked about was margins. And we said, Mike, how much does it cost to make a, you know, make a pound of coffee? You know how much he sells it for, but I said, how much does it cost? You know, it's easy to know the cost when you pay a third party producer because they send an invoice. But what does it cost if you do it inside? That's hard. And small business owners don't normally spend the time because it's so hard to calculate those hours and those minutes that a person spends to produce something and all those materials. So we actually spent the time and realized, wow, there's a huge savings here. So Mike, over the last pretty much 12 months, maybe eight months, has said we got to start to think about moving to new facility, bringing production in because that number is such a huge number in pennies per bag, but multiply by lots of bags is a lot of money real, you can say. Real number. Well, I would say if there's one more piece of advice that I could throw in, sit down with your accountant over a cup of coffee. <laughs> that would be Death Wish coffee, right? That's right. Mike, Andrew, thanks for joining us. Uh, we appreciate the time. Congratulations. Uh, Thank you very much. success. <laughs> and uh, good to see the partnerships working out so well. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. Back appreciate with more it. from San Jose here as theCUBE continues our coverage live in just a moment.